Imagine right now what your life would be like if you couldn't read, and then you couldn't pass a driver's test. You couldn't read a newspaper or Facebook. You couldn't fill out a job application or even read the help wanted. You wouldn't be able to graduate from high school. This almost happened to me. Learning how to read was really challenging for me. My parents both went to school for only three years. They never read to me at home and couldn't help me learn how to read. Reading was really hard, partly because I grew up in a home where books did not exist. 3,000 students drop out of school every day in America. Think about that, 3,000 a day. The majority of those dropouts cannot read at grade level. When we heard about this, we knew that we had to do something. So we had to think. How could we get the kids in our community excited about reading? We had to think, how could we create a wave of positive peer pressure to get kids hooked on books? Instead of drugs? Or alcohol. Or video games. It's hard to get kids motivated about reading when adults tell them to read. But when a friend suggests a book to another friend, that's when they really start to get it. So we created the Alliance for Literacy, a partnership between schools, businesses, and libraries. I was so proud when my logo and slogan was chosen, Hooked on Books. Real kids into reading. We recruited schools and kids from all over town to help us run it. We went on the radio and we spoke with the mayor of Santa Fe and he proclaimed 2012 to be the year of the book. So we had to think, would kids read a book if they could win an iPad or a skateboard? Would kids put down their video games for an hour if they could win a bike or a Kindle? And we figured out that the answer was yes. So we started holding tons of competitions with really cool prizes. We had a song rap and poem contest, a book cover contest, a bookmark contest. We even had a Hunger Games writing contest. And the winner was flown to LA to be the Hunger Games premiere. Many people said to us that reading should be its own reward and that we shouldn't reward kids for reading. And yeah, once you can read, reading is its own reward. But until you're hooked, it really helps to have some motivation, something that will help you discover how great books are. And once you find that book that gets you hooked, then you just want more. Our contest inspired kids to discover that book. And many kids discover that book when their parents read to them. But there are some kids like me that don't have someone to read to them. As the contest went on, lots of kids shared with us that they don't have books to read at home. Their parents don't have the time to take them to the library, and if they lost the book, they couldn't afford to pay the fine. It was the same way for me. I grew up in a home with no books. So, we had to think, what if kids don't have the access to books? So we set up free hooked on bookshelves all over town. In waiting rooms. In medical clinics. And at our local hospital. In places where kids have to wait with nothing to do. We held book drives at schools and local businesses. We collected and sorted through thousands of donated books. The books began to fly off the shelves, and local businesses sponsored bookshelves, and we heard wonderful feedback that kids were being read to and picking up books to read on their own. However, as all of this was going on, we began to realize that some kids just couldn't read well enough to read a free book or enter a contest. We had supplied the spark, the motivation, and now the books, but what if the kids can't read the books? So we had to think, how can we help kids that are struggling with reading in school? The answer was simpler than any carefully constructed set of textbooks or lesson plans. The answer was fun. We came up with the idea for a fun, intensive reading camp to reach the kids that really needed help. All of the students who were referred to us were at least one to two years behind, and many were at the risk of being held back. We called it the Reading is Magic Camp and designed our two-week camp with master teachers featuring hands-on reading activities and games with intensive phonics training. Every morning, we would uh, introduce a phonics concept, and then we would spend the rest of the day weaving that concept into games and songs and fun activities. Every student would start out as a page, and then they would work their way on a quest, earning points to become a knight, a prince, or a princess by the end of the camp, playing games like word jousting and reading baseball, and my favorite was a vocabulary twister. Effort was rewarded, not with grades, but with magic wands and shields and that final promotion to knighthood. 
The most amazing thing was that as their confidence grew, so did their courage and their persistence. The kids now wanted to sit down and read to us even when they weren't asked to. Some even asked for extra homework just for the fun of it. Towards the middle of the first week, we all began to see confidence in these kids that wasn't there before. It was amazing to me that all it took was believing in these students. All they needed was someone to encourage them. You could see the sense of accomplishment on their faces when they read a book, understood a difficult word, or hit a home run in word baseball. It had become fun. They became hooked. The kids loved it, and we loved it too. They never broke down in frustration or drifted into boredom, as is common at school. By the end of the camp, they didn't even want to go home. The most amazing thing to see and most incredible thing to see was that on top of all the games and rewards, they were making real, measurable progress, and they were motivated. Before and after the camp, each camper was tested on two different standardized assessment tests. On average, each student grew one year in those two weeks. <laughs> each student to show almost a full year's growth on two different tests after only two weeks of instruction showed us that our camp really had worked. So we had to think, maybe this is something that can make a real difference. Anyone can donate books. Any business can set up a free bookshelf in their waiting room. Anyone who reads well can volunteer their time to help a child learn to read. And the most important message is that anyone can create a Hooked on Books program in their school, library, or community. I've always believed that everyone has the potential to change the world, no matter how old they may be. I learned in school about the problems of the world, and I always wondered about what I could do to make a difference. Gandhi said that we needed to be the change we wish to see in the world, and through Hooked on Books, we can be that change. This all actually started with a TED Talk. I saw a TED Talk online given by the principal of a school in India. Her name was Kiran Birsetti. And she was talking all about the changes that kids were making with no money. And they were doing incredible things. So I emailed her, and she actually emailed me back, uh, which is really surprising. It rarely happens in Santa Fe. So, <laughs> <laughs> we started Skyping, and she invited me to come to India. So since our school's an expeditionary learning school, I was able to apply for a Fund for Teachers grant, which is for professional development. And I was able to go to India with a group of 15 students, some of these guys, and a fellow teacher. And we were able to see amazing things that students were doing there with little to no funding. And so we came back to New Mexico determined to do something in our own community. Imagine again, for a moment, what your life would be like if you couldn't read. And then, you have to think, what, what can, can I, I do to help change the world? world? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much.